All right, in this video, I wanna talk about, or kind of introduce the idea of a triple integral. And I don't think the actual math here is gonna be anything too, um, too earth shattering for you because you've seen uh, double integrals already. Um, and, and the idea and the, and the work is, is basically the same. And you'll notice in like this first integral up here um, that, that all of the uh, bounds are just numbers. You know, you'll say, okay, dz, so we're going to do uh, with respect to z first, treating x's and y's as constant, then we'll do y, and, then we'll, and so on. And we'll arrive, of course, at a, at a final answer. Um, I did want to talk about, you know, the two, uh, the double integral allowed us to basically have a, a third dimension that fell down to a, the xy plane. You know, we'd always defined our base as kind of like, all right, we've got, you know, we began with like a square or a, a rectangular base, and we just used, you know, the numbers, and we would integrate our function, and and that that function kind of told us, okay, we've got this third, you know, this third dimension that sets the height of our kind of, you know, almost prism-looking shape, and then we changed the bounds to be functions. We said, oh, the, the you know, the base doesn't have to just be uh, a rectangle; it can be anything. Uh, as long as we can define those edges as uh, with functions, well, the third, uh, the the third integral, the triple integral, allows us to think more in three D space. That it it should be we should be able to find these volumes out in space. They shouldn't always have to fall down to be uh, on the plane on the x y plane. So that's that's what this does. That's what this accomplishes is it allows our volumes to actually be out in space rather than always referencing back to the xy plane. Um, so let's just kind of quickly go through the, the nuts and bolts here of, of this. Um, let's start with respect to z. So uh, we're going to have 4x squared yz. Evaluate at 0 and 1. If I plug in 0, I get 0. If I plug in 1 for z, I get 4x squared y minus 1 fourth. And of course, you know, that minus out front, I'm going to end up with uh, 1 fourth. I like to have the positive term first. So. And now let's do this one for dy. Okay, so we're going to have... Uh, 1 fourth y minus 2x squared y squared. And we're going to evaluate that at 4 and negative 1 for y. So let's see if I plug in 4, I get oh, 32. And if I plug in negative 1, All right, let me kind of see if I can simplify this in my head a little bit. I got 1 minus negative 5, or negative 1 fourth, so that's 5 fourths. And then I've got negative 32 minus negative 2, so I've got minus 30x squared. And now I'm going to do this for dx. So I'm going to have 5 fourths x minus 10x cubed evaluated at 3 and 2, which, uh, if you calculate that out, it's going to be negative 700 and set, oh, excuse me, 55 over 4. All right, let's do a, a one that's a little bit different. I'm going to add one that has a uh, an actual uh, uh, variable. All right, so you're going to notice here our first... Uh, one is dx. Okay, of course, I don't have an x in here, so the whole thing just serves as a constant. So I'm going to have uh, x, uh, y, cosine, oops, cosine of z to the fifth. And we're going to evaluate that at 3 and 0 for x. So that's just going to be uh, 3y cosine of uh, z to the fifth. Okay. Oh 
Okay, so now uh, next up is dy. So now we're going to do 3y cosine of z to the fifth uh, from 0 to z squared dy. So we're going to have uh, 3 halves y squared cosine of z to the fifth evaluate at z squared and 0. So if I plug in z squared, of course I have z squared squared, so I'd have 3 halves z to the fourth, which is pretty handy <laughs> for what's about to come up. All right, so now we're going to integrate this from 0 to 1. I should just mention if we plug in 0, we would get 0. So now you can think a little uh, substitution. u is z to the fifth, the derivative is 5 z uh, to the fourth, which of course I do have a z to the fourth. Put a one fifth out front, um, which means I'd have, with three halves already there and another one, I'd have three tenths the integral cosine of u to u. Antiderivative of cosine, of course, is just sine. So I got three tenths sine. Instead of u, I'm going to write uh, at, uh, z to the fifth back in there. Evaluate at 1 and 0. That's kind of a weird final answer. I wish we'd had a nicer uh, uh, minus, and, of course, minus 0. I wish we'd had a little bit nicer a number to evaluate for sine, but there it is. Um, so, again, just a little bit of work, uh, kind of the 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 way that we go about doing triple integrals, the process.